Hey everyone, welcome back to Crypto Flow, where I try to teach you uh, the limitless potential of crypto and DeFi. So in today's show, I want to cover a um, a blockchain game that I've been um, bullish on for a bit now. Um, it's starting to get more exposure, and I wanted to just discuss why I like this project and why I aped in. Um, so the the game that I'm talking about today is uh, something called DeFi Kingdoms. It lives on the Harmony One blockchain. And uh, I found this uh, blockchain game through a fellow YouTuber by the name of Taiki. Um, so I'll put a link to his channel below. Uh, he has great yield farming videos and uh, he dro he consistently drops alpha on different pro new projects and things like that. So go check him out, leave a comment and tell him Crypto Flow sent you. Um, so, so he covered DeFi Kingdoms a few months back. Um, at the time, all DeFi Kingdoms was was kind of a, a promise and a dream and a yield farm with some nice... SNES RPG era graphics and music. Um, the amount of work put into the art and the the structure of this project and the map and everything else uh, made me feel like, well, this doesn't look like a rug pull. Um, this is quite a lot of work to have put in in order to for this to be a rug pull, right? So. But you can never really tell, will a project pan out? Will it uh, crash and burn? So he covered the yield farms. The APRs at that time were high. Uh, they're still pretty high. Um, so they were high. They were about uh, 1K APR at the time. Um, so my strategy when I get into a new yield farm or anything of that nature, a new investment, I try to do uh, anywhere between one to 3% of my portfolio's net worth. Uh, the reason for that is let's say we put in, let's say we ape in with 50% of our net worth and the whole thing turns out to be a scam or a rug pull. Well, now you're down 50% on your whole portfolio and you're going to feel really bad. So to avoid that max pain scenario, I enter with a small amount first and I keep an eye on the project. I keep an eye on the token. I see how it performs, how the yield farm performs. Uh, make sure it's not, you know, your typical uh, farm and dump kind of situation and, and play accordingly. So I got into... Uh, the jewel token I got into the jewel one farm um, somewhere around I think it was around six dollars a jewel maybe five somewhere in this area well we'll look at the chart a little more later so at the time the only yield farm that was here was or no the the one that I was the only yield farm I was interested in was the jewel one yield farm so um so here when you go into the game um when you first log into the game uh, you are asked to create i guess an account so to speak so you pay a small amount of harmony token to create your account um, and once you create your account the main screen is this map so what's really cool about DeFi kingdoms is that they um they take DeFi concepts and make them a little more easy to understand in the sense that they apply these uh, analogies to different things. For example, yield farming. When you think of a farm, what do you think of? I guess a garden, right? So they have this garden section and they have a seed box. So the seed box are your, your LPs your yield farms so they have all the yield farms that they uh, have for DeFi kingdoms listed here and you could harvest your yield through here 
Or you could do it... I guess you can't do it here. But, yeah, they, they apply these nice little analogies to everything. So, you have your gardens, which is your yield farming. You have the bank. Uh, they have something similar to uh, Sushi Swap. They have the X Jewel token, where you could deposit your jewel and gain a, an APR on the jewel transactions through DeFi Kingdoms. Um, so it's single-sided staking, so you avoid uh, impermanent loss. And uh, the project actually uses how much jewel you have staked to determine airdrops and uh, qualifications for different things. So that's what the bank is. Alchemist, this is something new. I assume you'll be able to take some of your rewards from your profession questing if you choose to do that um, and create some sort of potions or things like that. Um, we have the meditation circle, which is where you would level up your hero NFTs. Um, another thing that's cool about this project are the heroes. So your heroes are how you actually play the game. Um, we'll get into that in a sec but essentially essentially you could play this one of two ways right you can you can just yield farm if you're very bullish on the game then you sh you're probably bullish on the token um and the jewel token can be farmed and like i mentioned prior um the yields are pretty good in my point of view uh, they're in the, you know, st we got a Jewel 1, which is 600% APR. Jewel Avalanche, which is 564. Uh, no idea what Super Bit is or this. So I'll skip those. But they offer a lot of nice farms uh, paired with L1. So you have Jewel Phantom, Jewel BNB, Jewel uh, UST, which is a Terra stablecoin. Jewel Bitcoin, 600%. That's pretty crazy. Um, Jewel Matic, 602%. Jewel USD, and so on and so forth. So, these APRs, uh, when I first got in, I got into the Jewel 1 farm. The APR at the time, I believe, was like 1,200% APR. And uh, that was a few months ago, and, and, and now it's around 600% APR. Um... The thing about yield farms is the more people that ape into a farm, uh, the less uh, rewards there are to go around because you could think of it as like a pie. So um, so if you see here, pool reward allocation. So they have a, a stack of jewel that they use for their rewards. So this particular farm has almost half of that pool um, allocated for the rewards for this farm. So... The more and more people that ape in, the smaller that this pie is going to be left for everybody. But that that's just kind of yield farming basics. So um, what's, what's nice about this farm, you may not be bullish on the one token, and I'm not either. But if you could get into this farm when one has maybe a retrace uh, or a dip, then you could kind of ride this pretty consistent APR for some time and not really have to worry about impermanent loss through the one token dumping. Um, the Jewel Avalanche and other L1 farms, these came in uh, much later. So I originally got in to the Jewel 1 farm uh, and then they opened up some other L1 farms and I'm super bullish on the avalanche token and I'm s I was and am still bullish on the jewel token so I decided to ape into this uh, much harder than this farm since I'm more bullish on avalanche than I am the harmony token. Um, but as you can see here, the, the pool reward allocation is much less than the one token. So what does that mean? Over time, I would suspect that this APR will go down quicker than this APR since the more people that ape into this farm, the more of that pie, this 8.5% portion of the reward pie, will be eaten up by you know these users. So 
you got to evaluate that when you uh, get into a farm. Try to, I mean, not every yield farm actually tells you the pool reward allocation either. So I like that this project is pretty transparent with those things. So, but yeah, so back to my story. So I got in originally in the Jewel One farm um, with, I think I got in around 1%. I think I put in a couple hundred dollars in there, waited a few weeks. Got my paycheck from work. I put in another I think it was maybe like five hundred or so in the same farm. So I added some more to this farm. Uh because because at the time, you know, the token was, was doing good still. Uh it wasn't dumping, which is something common you see with yield farms, is that they tend to dump um after a bit of time if if it's like a project that has no uh, fundamentals so these guys are actually trying to build a legit game and uh, they have some interesting locking mechanisms with the yield farms so all of that plus the jewel token has a lot of utility in the game so you use it to buy your hero nfts you use it to level up you use it to um, pretty much every transaction more or less you need the jewel token to uh process the transaction so there's buy pressure which is nice if you if you are a jewel holder um and you know the chart kind of reflects this um you know we've we've been kind of i think here is probably when no one knew about it right and then more exposures start happening and more and more people ate in and became bullish on the game um so yeah one of the big reasons why i'm bullish on this project is just the fact that their yield farms have held up now some things to consider for the future at some point there will no longer be uh the locking of the rewards for the yield farm so what how this works is that every epoch which is about every week or two, I believe. Um, the locked rewards, they they lock two percent less. So, the longer you just leave your rewards staying here, the more will be unlocked for you once you claim it. If I go ahead and claim it, this will go straight to me. This amount will be locked until i think july of 2022 uh and then i think at that point they they in their documentation they they claim that they will linearly unlock your lock jewel so what does that mean i'm not 100 percent sure um i guess maybe every week they unlock a certain percentage so it's kind of in your uh, best interest to f if you don't need access to these jewel tokens and you just want to stack jewel it's in your best interest to just stack and and let it ride here um so keep that in mind that when this jewel finally unlocks there might be some folks that want to take heavy profits so we might see a bit of a correction at that point um or maybe not so so that's one reason why i love this project is the consistent farms and uh I think one of the major reasons besides this locking unlocking and besides that jewel has high utility within the project so there's a lot of buy pressure um, another reason why we um, seeing a good consistent APR is because this is on the harmony blockchain so if we go to DeFi llama we can see that harmony is number 20 on the ranked by tvl so i'll be honest with you guys i would not be on harmony if it wasn't for DeFi kingdoms and in fact besides DeFi kingdoms and curve i have no idea what else is on harmony and i'm not really that interested to be honest so the only thing i'm i'm on harmony for is for DeFi kingdoms and honestly i feel like 
that's kind of helping prop up the one token or at least keep it from from dumping now not financial advice i haven't really done much research on the one token but i can tell you this that the jewel token definitely has a positive effect on the one token um obviously you need one to pay for the gas on the harmony chain so the jewel DeFi kingdoms and jewel are creating a buy pressure for the one token So, so that, that kind of covers the yield farming portion of it. There's a lot of nice farms if you're bullish on Jewel and L1s, which L1s have done really well this cycle. You could go ahead and ape into one of these uh, L1 combinations. Or if you're a little more suspicious on the long-term longevity of the Jewel token, you can go ahead and ape into uh, one of these stable farms, which actually has very nice APR for being a stable farm. Um, so you can ape into one of those if you want to mute the volatility. For the yield farming, more or less, um, if you guys want more information on how the locking and unlocking and yield farming works, uh, you could check out their documentation down here in the about section. And here would be the link to the documentation. I also put a link in the description below. So let's cover some of the gaming, actual game aspects of this blockchain game. Because obviously the Jewel token is not going to do well if there isn't a good game behind it. That's the whole point of the Jewel token and this project. So like I mentioned before, they have the gardens, which is yield farming. The bank, which is single-sided st staking. Um, we we have this um, so let's talk a little bit about heroes so let's say you actually want to participate in the questing and in the future they plan on having pve content and pvp content uh, so you're going to need a hero if you want to play the game so how do you go about getting a hero so you're going to go to the tavern and you could go to the agent and buy a hero So currently, this is uh, this is being filmed in December twenty third, two thousand twenty one. So currently, the hero floor. Let me just make sure all our filters are reset. The hero floor is thirty four jewel. Jewel is currently sitting at thirteen eighty six per jewel. So you do the math there. So that is the minimum price to get in as of December twenty third, twenty twenty one. Um, so if you want to play the game, you'll need a hero and you'll need to purchase one using Jewel. Now, what do you look for in a hero? Well, right now, the only quests that are available are the profession quests. So you'll want to um, figure out what kind of profession you want to focus in. There are four professions. You have foraging, gardening, mining, fishing. So foraging and fishing you get uh, certain items for completing the quests. And my assumption is that these items will become useful in the future once they add different things such as uh, alchemy uh, and the PvE and PvP content. So my assumption is that you'll be making potions and food and different things that create buffs for your character. Um, if you've ever played World of Warcraft, that's kind of what I'm picturing in my head. Um, so those are those two professions. The gardening, in addition to finding items, is supposed to actually reward you in jewels. So how it works is that if you have, for example, I'm deposited in the jewel AVAX farm. So depending on how strong your gardening gardener is as well as how much of a percent of the total pool you have deposited, you would gain a, you know, that it has some formula and it will calculate what your jewel reward is. So this quest actually rewards you in jewel. So that's literally play to earn. Um, now, don't think that 
you will, you know, earn a crazy amount of jewel doing this. After all, they do have to balance the game. Um, but I'm sure over time, as your heroes level up and your gardening profession levels up, you will see an increase in the jewel that you earn. And it's also based on how much you have deposited in your yield farm. So keep that in mind. Don't deposit $100 in the yield farm and then expect to earn, you know, $50 as a jewel reward when you quest. It's not going to work that way. They have to keep it balanced. So that's gardening. Mining is not out yet, but they uh, mentioned that mining is going to help you actually unlock your locked jewel early. Um, same thing applies to what I said about gardening to mining, don't expect to be able to unlock, you know, half your jewel with one quest run or something of that nature. Expect, expect it to be, you know, a drip effect. So you unlock a tiny bit with each quest and you'll earn a tiny bit of jewel which, with each gardening quest as well. So, so those are the four professions. So the only quests that are available are the profession quests. So as of today, there's fishing and foraging. Gardening got released yesterday to the beta, uh, the beta site of the project. Um, and mining is supposed to launch next Wednesday, the uh, whatever date that is. I guess the 30th. Um, so if you were to buy a hero today, I would buy it with these things in mind. Um, I would figure out what kind of profession you want to be i'll post uh some helpful medium articles in the description below uh where they go over what stats and uh, stat bonuses these highlighted stats here are stats that are receiving a bonus for this particular hero um so i have a few medium articles for you guys where they outline what stats are good for what profession as well as what classes are good for the profession because for example if a knight's main stats that increase as he levels up are let's just say strength and agility but the gardening requires wisdom and and let's say vitality then over time a knight isn't going to be as good for the gardening profession as a class that let's say focuses more on wisdom and vitality so anyway i'll link those uh those helpful medium articles in the description below you guys could check those out when you're going shopping for a hero so once you have your hero what can you do with it so like i mentioned before the profession quests are the only quests that are available there's also this wishing well quest which its main purpose is to let's see so you gain one xp which is very little but you get a chance to gain find these tiers so what are tiers used for tiers are used during the summoning process so that's another aspect of this game right you could go to this portal and go to the summoner if you have more than one hero you could summon a new hero and and they call it summoning but think of it as kind of like having these two heroes make a an offspring make a make a new person right so the new hero that comes out of this summon is gonna have some of the traits that these two guys share so for example if you if this guy's high in strength this guy's high in strength you could kind of guess that this guy is going to come out to be a class that's probably high in strength. So it's, it kind of works like that. Um, you know, I'm just making a, a generalization. That's not exactly how it works, but you get the picture. So, and actually, um, there's different tiers of heroes. So there's actually different tiers of heroes that you could get via summoning. Let me zoom in here. Um, and you need specific classes to get other classes and so on and so forth. So, for example, you need a pirate and a monk to get a ninja. You need a ninja and a summoner to get a sage. You need a sage and a dragoon to get a dread knight. So that's kind of uh, another aspect to the summoning. And just because you have a pirate and a monk and you summon with these guys, it does not mean 
you will always get a ninja. So there's some RNG mechanics on the back end. RNG stands for random number generator. So essentially there's some luck involved. So, but, but unless you have a pirate and a monk, you will not summon a ninja. So in order to get a chance to summon a ninja, you need a pirate and a monk to summon together. So that's kind of how it works. So the tears that you get from that quest are used during the summoning ritual. And you don't need to own two heroes. You do need to own at least one. And then you have a choice of hiring your hero. So you could actually rent and put up your heroes to be rented on the marketplace. So that's another aspect of, um, you know, play to earn here. So if you have a really good hero or a class that's rare, you could probably make some extra money, extra jewel in renting out your hero. Now keep in mind, if you do rent out a hero, um, it uses one of your summons, and summons are a finite characteristic of these heroes. Unless you have a Gen Zero hero, they are finite. So one, so here it says four out of four. If you use one, then you're left with three. So just keep that in mind whenever you summon or rent out your your heroes for summoning. So what else can you do? So we we covered the profession quest. We covered the wishing well quest. Now, in the future, this is kind of a re more recent announcement. So, DeFi Kingdoms and Avalanche actually announced that DeFi Kingdoms will be coming to Avalanche. So, what does that mean? Does that mean that DeFi Kingdoms on Harmony 1 is over? No, it does not mean that. So, essentially, you could think of it as... the. You could think of the of DeFi Kingdoms expanding to Avalanche as the look this is the WoW World of Warcraft map. So right now think of Kalimdor, this continent here, as the Harmony One um, DeFi Kingdoms. So when it comes to Avalanche, they're gonna be cute and keep uh, the theme of, you know, Avalanche, snow. Ice, cold, that kind of thing. So let's pretend Avalanche is Northrend, which is also a snowy kingdom in World of Warcraft. So they, the developers stated in an AMA that you could see these uh, deployments of DeFi kingdoms on other chains as different continents. So it's going to be the same base game, the same mechanics, the same uh, kind of gameplay loop. But you're going to have exclusive heroes here, exclusive items from questing here, and same thing with the Harmony 1 deployment of DeFi Kingdoms. You're going to have certain items and classes that you could only find on Harmony. Same thing with Avalanche. So this was very bullish news when this came out, in my point of view, because not only are they expanding to another chain, um, they're making sure to keep people interested in the Harmony 1 version. So um, you could also kind of think of it like Pokemon, where with Pokemon, you have Pokemon Red and Blue. You could find certain things in Red that you can't find in Blue and vice versa. But, you know, people that are really into Pokemon, they're going to get both games because they want to catch them all, right? So same kind of thing here. You're going to have the diehard DeFi Kingdoms fans, of which there are a lot of actual uh, fans of the game already. Um, you're going to have them wanting to get it all, right? Get every class, every every item, that kind of thing. So, to, to me, this is bullish news. They're going to try to keep the... Uh, momentum going with the Harmony 1 version, as well as expand to Avalanche. And they've also stated that every every new feature will hit the Harmony 1 version of DeFi Kingdoms first. And then things will trickle over to Avalanche and so on and so forth. Uh, in the description below, I will paste uh, a link to their roadmap so you guys could see you know what their plans are and if you guys want to keep up with the news on DeFi kingdoms i highly suggest you jump into their discord um they regularly do 
AMAs, which is very nice. Um, they're super transparent. Um, my impression of the of the development team is that they're very committed, very focused. Uh, so far, they've been delivering very regularly. Almost every week, they have a new patch out with uh, bug fixes, new features, and things like that to keep the players interested. I love the fundamentals of the game. Um, I have about four heroes of which I use to quest daily. And I'm just stacking the items, you know, hoping that some of the things I get are, are worth a good amount of money later on. So, to sum it up, I'm very bullish on DeFi Kingdoms. I'm very excited to see what they do with the PvE and PvP. Um, you know, there's some potential here for play to earn. If you're not interested in the game, you could certainly just yield farm jewel. Oh, one last thing before I leave you guys. I just want to say uh, one final reason why I'm very bullish on DeFi Kingdoms and the jewel token in general. So right now, DeFi Kingdoms is only deployed to the Harmony One blockchain, which has a 595 million TVL total value locked. So let's go in further. Who is number one for the, the TVL? DeFi Kingdoms is number one on the Harmony blockchain for TVL. And over half of the TVL is just DeFi Kingdoms. So, what can we expect when DeFi Kingdoms will deploy to the number four blockchain, Avalanche, which has a 12 billion TVL? My expectation is a lot more users, a lot more money aping into the Jewel token and DeFi Kingdoms and Hero NFTs in general. So overall, I think the move to Avalanche is bullish for the game. Uh, the devs did say that the Avalanche deployment of the game will have its own token, the Crystal token, but they are very cognizant of not to dilute the value of Jewel. And they, are, they have stated that you need Jewel in order to farm Crystal, to earn Crystal. So there's still going to be demand for the Jewel token. The Jewel token is seems to still be the uh top token for the game itself um so i'm very bullish on DeFi kingdoms if you guys like this content please subscribe and hit the like button and also click the bell notification button so that you don't miss another video comment down below what your plans are for DeFi kingdoms 